Welcome back to Dawn Wind Blows Movies Recap, today I will introduce a 2022 American superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character, the living vampire, Morbius. Spoilers ahead! Watch out and take care! The movie starts in Costa Rica, and the sinister aspects of the place are underlined with the name ending with De La Muerte, which means of death. The big, beefy mercenaries accompanying Morbius are nervous and insist they should leave before, before dark. Morbius intends to trap some vampire bats for his experiments, and the bait is himself. He cuts his palm, bloodthirsty bats flock out, mercenaries all rush to leave. Floss back to 25 years ago and a hospital in Greece. A 10-year-old Morbius greets his latest neighbor, who also suffers from a similar blood disorder, his surrogate brother Lucian. Hello, Milo. He, incidentally, calls Lucy. all the boys assigned to the bed adjacent to his, Milo. One day while doing dialysis, Milo's blood machine suddenly had stopped. Milo? Fortunately, Morbius manages to save Milo's life by fixing his broken blood pump. A friendship gradually formed between the two boys. What would you do? If you could be normal, just for an hour. I don't think about it. Give his talent, the kind and fatherly director of the hospital, Dr. Emil Nicholas, arranges for Morbius to study medicine in a gifted school in New York while continuing to care for Milo himself. In order to find a cure, Morbius agreed to leave and left a letter to say goodbye to his good goodbye. brother. He promised I'm Milo that one day he will find a way to save them both. A gust of wind blew the letter out of the window, Milo went to pick up the letter, a group of kids bullied him. Despite his body is weak, he insists on resisting them which implied that Milo's character is not as soft as his body, which also bought down the ambush for the main storyline later, his conflict with Morbius. Working towards a cure for his illness, Morbius creates synthetic blood, which helps countless people and getting him a Nobel Prize in the bargain. Returning to his lab, Morbius colleague Martine Bancroft derides him for illegal experiments he is conducting with Piran Hayak vampire bats he had illegally stolen from the Amazon rainforest. Attempting to extract their transgenic vampirism, remixing human DNA with bat DNA and produce an effectively curing his disease. He tests his serum on a lab rat, Mobia injected the serum into mice. It was the 117th attempt he tried, and again it resulted in a failure. The mice who appears to die. Moments later, Anna starts to have a seizure, but Morbius is able to take care of her before she suffers a stroke. Nice. Martine looks back at the lab and sees that the rat is revived and moving, meaning Morbius's serum is a success. Overjoyed, Morbius found Milo at first sight and told him the good news, indicating that there was hope for a cure. Knowing that it is most likely their last and best shot at living a normal quality of life. Milo agrees to fund Morbius' latest idea for a cure, even though Morbius warns him that it is highly illegal and crosses ethical lines. Morbius boards a container ship in international waters along with his colleague, Dr. Martine, where he asks her to administer the providential cures that he has created, the 243 test, this time as human trials on Morbius himself. Ugh. While Matting is waiting for the results of the experiment, a mercenary saunters into the lab as he noticed the lights of the ship flickered. Sure, I can see it. But an alarm went off in the lab, and when they turned around, they saw his broken free from the straps on his chair. Martin opened lab door, they found him as crawling on the ceiling. Morbius is now so powerful that he killed the mercenary and drained his blood without even trying. The other mercenaries heard the shot. And after Morbius regains his humanity, he watches himself attacking the men on security cameras who was terrified. He has fled after calling in the Mayday response and deleted all camera this records. Is the LCV Myrna, the LCV Myrna. When the FBI arrived, all that remained were the eight drained blood bodies with fake identities, which leads to a dead end in the investigation. Martine is found alive and was taken to the hospital. 
Returning to New York City, Morbius sneaks back into the lab, aware of the failure of the experiment, he isolates himself in his lab to continue understanding his new condition while also feeding off synthetic blood samples to satiate his hunger. He begins to hone his new bat-like powers, flying, super speed and strength, faster reflexes, and the bats in his lab also respond to him as their leader. Even more incredible is that he also get a bat mutated abilities, like radar can locate object. Soon after, Milo came to the lab looking for Morbius. Michael. It's me. He found Morbius locked himself in a room, who looks very weak. He told Milo to hurry down to the freezer and bring him synthetic blood. Mobius's mutation was brought under control after drinking the blood, Milo begged him desperately for the serum. Morbius rebuffed Milo and told him that he had made a serious mistake in the experiment. Morbius drove Milo away cruelly. On the other side, Martin woke up in the hospital, two FBI agencies came to investigate what happened on ship that day, she did not want to betray Morbius, she claimed did not remember anything, that night, a nurse in the hospital where Martine is admitted, she and Michael work there, was killed, her body was found the next day that drained of blood, which put Morbius in the spotlight. He was already on the radar of the police for the death of the men on the ship. The police soon arrived at the hospital, Morbius took some artificial blood and rushed to leave. But just as he reached the door, two agencies ran into him. He tries to escape, but ultimately has to surrender to the police. Later Milo came as Morbius's attorney, Morbius told Milo of his struggle, and Milo said that he couldn't believe his best friend could do such a terrible thing and that he would find a way to get him out. He hands him a blood bag. Interestingly, he also leaves his walking stick in the cell. This makes Michael realize that Milo has taken the serum as well and has become just like him. Michael escapes from his cell and catches up to Milo, who has already let loose his thirst for human blood, killing people and drinking theirs. As Milo becomes a vampire and kills a man at a newsstand, Morbius found him by using his echolocation ability. After being found, Milo attempts to convince Morbius to join him as they can give in to their newfound powers and urges. Morbius persuade Milo stop harm people and try to turn back. After a heated argument he chases Milo into the subway, where they both fly and crash in front of others. Police show up and try to arrest Milo, but he slaughtered them all. Milo attempts to catch Morbius, but he escapes through the tunnel with the help of the wind. Morbius finds Martin on a bus explains to her Milo's involvement and requests her help. They came to a hidden coffee house, Morbius told Martin about all his condition and how he has to keep it under control before he succumbs to his bloodlust like Milo. This time, two lads attracted the attention of Morbius, they are two underground drug trafficking, have a laboratory, this is all Morbius need at this time. After telling Martin what he thought, he used his echolocation ability to find their lab and scares them away in order to continue working and develop antidote to release his vampirism, even though it will kill him. Milo goes out to a nightclub where he ends up crossing paths with an aggressive guy. He later follows the guy and his friends down an alley where he kills them all. Martin returned to the laboratory and accidentally encountered Milo. Milo threat Martin to tell him the whereabouts of Morbius, Martin pretend not to know, Milo apparently does not believe that he later tracks Martin back to their new lab and observed Morbius working with Martin and watches them kiss, knowing he has found a weakness in his brother. After Stroud and Rodriguez find the dead clubgoers, they see surveillance footage showing Milo's face, making them realize Morbius is not their killer. Nicholas arrives at Milo's house and tries to stop him from wreaking all this havoc. But Milo is angry and believes that all that Nicholas is saying is because he is repulsed by him. Milo slashes Nicholas's torso and leaves him to die. A dying Nicholas calls Morbius, who has already prepared the antidote, more like a poison that will kill Milo, and tells him everything that happened.
Nicholas. Morbius, all angry, rushes to save Nicholas, but it's too late. Nicholas dies. Morbius is able to hear Milo holding Martine hostage, asking her to call for Morbius. Morbius leaves for Milo, his vampire self taking hold of him. Morbius rushes to her aid and feels her dying. Not able to bear seeing her in pain, Morbius sinks his teeth into her, freeing her of the pain. Morbius, heartbroken, stands over her and lets a droplet of his blood fall into her mouth. This is followed by a fierce fight between Morbius and Milo that ultimately takes them underground and ends with Morbius launching a colony of bats toward Milo and using it as a diversion to inject Milo with the poison. Morbius stays by his brother's side as he dies. There is no time to say goodbye. By the time the police arrived, the bats have fled the scene, Morbius flies off into the night, while Martine appears to reawaken as a vampire. This movie left an open-ended, as there are two scenes in the credits at the end. The first post-credit scene reveals the dimensional rift in the sky we see at the end of Spider-Man, No Way Home. We know now that this momentary split in the multiverse allowed various characters linked to Spider-Man to be transported to different universes, just like Venom. Meanwhile, Adrian Toomes finds himself in a new prison cell, in a different prison, in a different reality. Curiously, because Toomes hasn't actually broken any laws in this particular reality, he is allowed to walk free. Then, in the second post credit scene, we see Morbius on a seemingly deserted patch of land, waiting for something or someone. In flies Toomes, hit out in his vulture suit, we're not entirely sure how he acquired this in the new dimension, and he has a proposition for Morbius. Vulture explains that he thinks he's in a different universe due to Spider-Man, and suggests that he and Morbius form a team. This is an obvious nod to the formation of the Sinister Six, are you looking forward to the The Next Sinister Six series? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching.